The Life and Sad Ending of Jake LaMotta Jake LaMotta was born Jairkov Jake LaMotta on July 10, 1922, was born on the Lower East Side of New York City. His mother was born in the United States to Italian immigrants, while his father was an immigrant from Messina, Sicily, who came with family including his brother Joseph. The family lived briefly in Philadelphia before returning to New York and settling in the Bronx. Jake's father forced the boy to find other boys in order to entertain neighborhood adults, who threw pocket change into the ring. Lamota's father collected the money and used it to help pay the rent. One of Lamota's cousins on his father's side was Richard Lamota, who became an entrepreneur and creator of the Chipwich ice cream tree. Lamota learned to box while in a reformatory in upstate New York, where he had been sent for attempted robbery. Afterward, he fought undefeated in amateur bouts, turning professional at age 19 in 1941. During World War II, he was rejected for military service, he had had a mastoid operation as a child on one of his ears and it affected his hearing. His mother was born in the United States to Italian immigrants, while his father was an immigrant from Messina, Sicily, who came with family including his brother Joseph. The family lived briefly in Philadelphia before returning to New York and settling in the Bronx. Jake's father forced the boy to find other boys in order to entertain neighborhood adults, who threw pocket change into the ring. Lamota's father collected the money and used it to help pay the rent. One of Lamota's cousins on his father's side was Richard Lamota, who became an entrepreneur and creator of the Chipwich ice cream tree. Lamota learned to box while in a reformatory in upstate New York, where he had been sent for attempted robbery. Afterward, he fought undefeated in amateur bouts, turning professional at age 19 in 1941. During World War II, he was rejected for military service, he had had a mastoid operation as a child on one of his ears and it affected his hearing. As a middleweight in his first 15 bouts, Lamoto went 14-0-1 before losing a highly controversial split decision to Jimmy Reeves in Reeves' hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. Chaos erupted after the decision was announced. Fights broke out around the ring and the crowd continued to boo for 20 minutes. The arena's organist tried to calm down the crowd by playing the Star Spangled Banner. One month later, Lamoto and Reeves fought again in the same arena. Lamoto lost a much less controversial decision. A third match between the two took place on March 19, 1943, in Detroit, Michigan. The first five rounds were close, though Reeves was struggling in the fourth. In the sixth round, Lamota floored Reeves, who was only down for a second. Once the fight resumed, Lamota landed a left on Reeves' chin, sending him down face first. Reeves was blinking his eyes and shaking his head as the referee counted him out. Lamota fought Sugar Ray Robinson in Robinson's middleweight debut at Madison Square Garden, New York, October 2, 1942. Lamota knocked Robinson down in the first round of the fight. Robinson got up and took control over much of the fight, winning via a unanimous 10 round decision. A 10 round rematch took place on February 5, 1943, at Olympia Stadium in Detroit, Michigan. The eighth round was historic. Lamota landed a right to Robinson's head and a left to his body, sending him through the ropes. Robinson was saved by the bell at the count of nine. Lamota, who was already leading on the scorecards before knocking Robinson out of the ring, pummeled and outpointed him for the rest of the fight. Robinson had trouble keeping Lamota at bay. Lamota won via unanimous decision, giving Robinson the first defeat of his career. The victory was short lived as the two met on February 26, 1943, in what was another 10-round fight, once again at Olympia Stadium in Robinson's former home of Detroit. Robinson was knocked down for a nine-count in round seven. Robinson later stated, He really hurt me with a left in the seventh round. I was a little dazed and decided to stay on the deck. Robinson won the close fight by unanimous decision, using a dazzling left jab and jarring uppercuts. Lamota said the fight was given to Robinson because he would be inducted into the army the next day. A fourth fight, the Dudo's final 10-rounder, took place nearly two years after the third, on February 23, 1945, at Madison Square Garden, New York.
Robinson won again by a unanimous decision. La Moda and Robinson had their fifth bout at Comiskey Park, Chicago, Illinois on September 26, 1945. Robinson won by a very controversial split decision, contested over 12 rounds. The decision was severely booed by the 14,755 people in attendance. Lamoda later said in his autobiography that the decision was widely criticized by several newspapers and boxing publishers. Robinson said afterward, this was the toughest fight I've ever had with Lamoda. On November 14, 1947, Lamoda was knocked out in the fourth round by Billy Fox. Suspecting the fight was fixed, the New York State Athletic Commission withheld purses for the fight and suspended Lamoda. The fight with Fox would come back to haunt him later in life during a case with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Lamoda made his first title defense against Tiberio Mitri on July 7, 1950, at Madison Square Garden, New York. Lamoda retained his title via unanimous decision. Lamoda's next defense came on September 13, 1950, against Laron Dothwheel. Dothwheel had previously beaten Lamoda by decision before Lamoda became world champion. By the 15th round, Dothwheel was ahead on all scorecards and seemed to be about to repeat a victory against La Moda. La Moda hit Dothwheel with a barrage of punches that sent him down against the ropes toward the end of the round. Dothwheel was counted out with 13 seconds left in the fight. This fight was named Fight of the Year for 1950 by The Ring magazine. The sixth and final fight between La Moda and Robinson took place at Chicago Stadium. This fight was scheduled for 15 rounds and was for the middleweight title. Held on February 14, 1951, St. Valentine's Day, the fight became known as boxing's version of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. In the last few rounds, La Moda began to take a horrible beating and was soon unable to defend himself from Robinson's powerful blows. But La Moda refused to go down. Robinson won by a technical knockout in the 13th round when the fight was stopped. La Moda moved up to light heavyweight after losing his world middleweight title. He had poor results at first. He lost his debut against Bob Murphy, lost a split decision to Norman Hayes, and drew with Gene Hairston in his first three bouts. In his next three fights, La Moda had rematches with Hayes, Hairston, and Murphy, and defeated all of them by unanimous decision. On December 31, 1952, La Moda had his next fight against Danny Nordic. He knocked La Moda down for the only time in his career by a right hand in the seventh round. La Moda got up and was beaten against a corner by Nordico until the bell rang. La Moda's corner stopped the bout before the eighth round began. After retiring from the ring, La Moda owned and managed a bar at 1120 Collins Avenue in Miami Beach. He also became a stage actor and stand-up comedian. In 1958 he was arrested and charged with introducing men to an underage girl at a club he owned in Miami. He was convicted and served six months on a chain gang, although he maintained his innocence. La Moda appeared in more than 15 films, including The Hustler with Paul Newman and Jackie Gleason, in which he had a role as a bartender. He appeared in several episodes of the NBC police comedy Car 54 Where Are You? A lifelong baseball fan. He organized the Jake LaModa All-Star Team in the Bronx. The LaModa team played in Sterling Oval which was located between 165th and 164th streets between Clay and Teller Avenue. LaModa had a troubled personal life, including a spell in a reformatory, and was married seven times. He admitted beating his wives and coming close to beating the men to death during a robbery. In February 1998, LaModa's elder son, Jake LaMota Jr., died of liver cancer. In September 1998, his younger son, Joseph LaMota, died in the crash of Swiss Air Flight 111. His nephew, John LaMota, fought in the heavyweight novice class of the 2001 Golden Gloves Championship Tournament. John later became an actor, and one of his roles was as Duke, who ran the bar of that name featured in the television comedy series Frasier. Another nephew, William Lustick, is a well-known director and producer of horror films and the president of Blue Underground Incorporated. La Moda had four daughters, 
including Christy by his second wife Vicky Wamoda and Stephanie by his fourth wife Dimitria. He married his seventh wife, his longtime fiancé Denise Baker, on January 4, 2013. Lamoda remained active on the speaking and autograph circuit and published several books about his career, his life, and his fights with Robinson. Lamoda died on September 19, 2017, from complications of pneumonia in a nursing home in Florida, at the age of 95.